What's up, everybody? This is your boy Tech G back with another video to help you successfully pass the CompTIA Network Plus N10 007 certification. So let's get into it. In this video, you're going to learn about IP version 4 and IP version 6 CIDR notation for classless subnetting. So let's talk about CIDR notation. So CIDR, that stands for Classless Interdomain Routing. It's also known as Prefix Notation or Slash Notation. And this is a method for allocating IP addresses and for IP routing. CIDR notation was introduced in 1993 to replace the previous classful network addressing architecture on the internet. Its goal was to slow the growth of routing tables on routers across the internet and to help slow the rapid exhaustion of IP version 4 addresses. Because as you guys should know by now, there's only a finite number of IP version 4 and we've pretty much run out of them, which is why we switched over to IP version 6 in a lot of instances. So what you're looking at on your screen right here, this is a binary to decimal conversion table to help you guys quickly figure out what is the decimal number equivalent for the binary value or the binary value for the decimal equivalent. And this will come in handy when you are out there trying to do conversions so that you can fully understand what's going on with these IP version four addresses and IP version six addresses as well. So let's go ahead and get into some of these examples to show you IP IP version 4 CIDR notation. All right, guys. So if you recall from my last video where we talked about classful subnetting, we talked about three primary classes of IP addresses, class A, class B, and class C. If you need a refresher, go watch the video before this one in this series. But as you can see, we have a class A address, and that address is 101.0.0.1. Its subnet mask is going to be 255.0.0.0. When you convert this into binary is going to have eight ones followed by 24 zeros and the ones they equal the network bits so this represents the network and all of these zeros they represent the host bits on each network so basically these are all the bits that are reserved in this particular address that you could assign to various devices within your network but like i stated if you go watch my previous video talking about classful addresses that deal with class a B and C addresses, you'll discover that this is way too many addresses for the average network to deal with. So that's why we got this thing called classless subnetting, which makes this pretty much more manageable to deal with. Also, and this is the CIDR notation, it's going to be represented by a slash eight. And this slash eight just indicates that the first eight bits have been turned on to represent the network we're dealing with. And as you can see in our handy dandy little chart down here, eight one that represents 255. Let's go to the next example. All right, so here is an example of a class B address. That's 129.0.0.1. Being that it's a class B address, it's subnet mask. By default, it's 255.255.0.0. This is the binary equivalent to it, 16 ones, which represents the network bits, followed by 16 zeros, which represents each bit on on the network that you could potentially assign to a bunch of devices within this network. And the CIDR notation is a slash 16 to indicate that the first 16 bits have been turned on. Let's go to the next example. And then we have a class C address in this one, we have 193.0.0.1. By default, its subnet mask is 255.255.255.0. This is its binary equivalent. 24 bits have been turned on to represent the network bits. And then we have the host bits, 8 bits, which represents the addresses that you could assign to potential devices within the network. And you have its CIDR notation of a slash 24, which once again represents the first 24 bits have been turned on to represent the network. 
Now, what if we're dealing with an IP version four address, but it doesn't have the standard default CIDR notation. So as you can see in this example, we have 198.0.0.1. Well, if you were paying attention in my last video, you would know that a 198 IP address would automatically make this a class C address. And by default, a class C address, its subnet mask will usually be 255.255.255.0. But in this instance, we have a slash 14 or a Saturn notation 14. So how would we deal with this? Well, we're just simply going to turn on the first 14 bits in the overall network so that we can get this subnet mask right here of 255.252.0.0. And if you convert this down into its binary equivalent, you will have eight ones followed by six ones and two zeros. And then the rest of these will be zeros. Or you can just come down here, take the number 252, come down here and find out what its decimal equivalent is going to be. And then, like I said earlier, all of the ones are going to represent the network bits and the zeros are going to represent the host bits for each network, which leaves a remainder of 18 bits. So basically, when you see a CIDR like this and it's attached to a standard A, B or C classful IP address, basically what we're doing, we are essentially borrowing borrowing bits from the host in order to cover down for the network portion of the IP address. And this is what is going to allow for us to really truly subdivide these IP networks into more granular, more manageable IP addresses that a typical network would be accustomed to dealing with instead of dealing with tens of thousands, if not possibly millions of IP addresses that, you know, your average network just not be able to deal with. And so, like I say, once again, we are essentially borrowing bits from the host in order to make this CIDR notation 14 or slash 14 network for this IP address. We just turn the first 14 bits on and then the remaining bits are turned off. So that's how we end up with a subnet mask of 255.252.0.0. Next example. So we have IP version 4 address 201.1.0.0. Now the 201, that would normally automatically make this a class C address. And once again, a class C address that would normally have a subnet mask of 255.255.255.0. But being that we have a CIDR notation of slash 21, that means we're only going to be using the first 21 bits instead of the first 24 bits. So we're just going to turn all of these on. You got eight ones here, eight ones here and then you have five ones here followed by three zeros and that's what gets you 248 or you just go 248 look down here at your chart 248 you have five ones followed by three zeros down here and once again the ones they equal the network bits 21 bits and the zeros equal the host bits on each network 11 bits and you have a slash 21 notation all right so in this example we're going to figure out how to create the subnet mask if all we are presented with is the CIDR notation of slash 27. So being that we have a slash 27, that means we are going to turn on the first 27 bits. So you got eight bits here, eight bits here, eight bits here, and three bits here. That's going to get you a 255.255.255.224. If you don't know how to convert this, you got three ones followed by five zeros. Come down to your chart, three ones followed by five zeros equals the decimal number 224. And that's how we end up with this here. And once again, the ones equal the network bits and the zeros equal the host bits on each network that you can assign IP addresses to devices for. All right, so now we're gonna talk about IP version six CIDR notation. So an IP version six address, this is usually distributed by the Internet Assigned Numbers Authority or the IANA. The IANA, they are responsible for providing address blocks to the regional internet registries. 
who then assign smaller blocks of IP version 6 addresses out to the ISPs or the internet service providers. And from there, the ISP will then assign you, the end user, with an IP version 6 address that has a slash 48 subnet, which you can then further subnet down as needed. So basically, these are the people that create the IP addresses right here. And I'll show you on the next slide how this all breaks down. They then pass it off to another group of people who deal with a region and then they slap on a block for their IP address identification. Then they pass it off to the ISP who then slaps on a block for their IP address identification. And then they pass it off down to the end user who can then begin the process of creating their own network. And then they can go ahead and try to subnet it out. And then they can go ahead and dish out IP addresses from the remaining bits that represent the host to devices within their network. Now, before we get started, you need to remember that an IP version six address is 128 bits long, where it is eight blocks of 16 bits. So basically 16 times eight equals 128. And the values and numbers, remember they are hexadecimal numbers. These are not decimal numbers. So this is not a decimal number. This is a hexadecimal value. This is hexadecimal. All of these are hexadecimal values, not decimal numbers. And that's important if you all have to go through the conversion process of converting these back into their binary or decimal equivalent. And if you don't know how to do that, go watch the video in my playlist that came before the video that came before this one, where I talk about decimal to binary to hexadecimal conversions. I walk you guys step by step on how that whole process works. All right. So anyways, let's talk about this IP version six address. So this is our IP version six address. It is 128 bits long. And remember, it's eight blocks. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight blocks, and each block has 16 bits in it. Now, the first three blocks, this is called your global routing prefixes, and they are 48 bits long. 16 times three is 48, right? Remember, this is the IANA, the Internet Assigned Numbers Authority. They are responsible for setting up the first block identification then they pass this IP address off to the regional internet registries and they will go ahead and assign their IP identification address onto it. And then they pass this off to your local ISP or your internet service provider and they will go ahead and assign their identification number to this IP address. So that is the global routing prefixes are the first three blocks of an IP version six address. And then we get down to block number four. This is locally assigned by the end user or you, and this is what you will use for creating your network IDs. And this thing is 16 bits long and your network ID, it can start with a 001. And then from there, you can create another network ID of 0002, 34, and so on and so on. And remember, this thing has 16 subnet bits. Within this subnet, you can create a grand total of 65,536 total subnets out of this IP address if you wanted to. That's how many different addresses you can have going on up in here. But reality is you will probably never create or have a need for 65,536 total subnets. But if you wanted to, the option for you to do it is there. And this is also part of the reason as to why the switch from IP version 4 to IP version version six is in effect because there's almost an infinite number of possibilities that you can create with IP addresses as opposed to IP version four, which is capped off at around, I want to say 4 billion. If I'm not mistaken, I have to go back and check my notes, but that's why we use IP version six, because theoretically, you can never run out of IP addresses. And then we get down to the last four blocks, which represents the host ID of this IP version six address. And this host ID can support two to the 64 power host, which is approximately equal to 18 million trillion hosts per subnet. So each subnet from the previous slide can support up to 18 million trillion 
host IDs or IP addresses. So remember the last slide, I said you had 65,000 subnets you can create and each subnet out of the 65,000 can support 18 million trillion hosts per subnet. That's why I say theoretically, you will never ever run out of IP addresses with IP version six. And now let's talk about its actual CIDR notation. So once again, here is the IP version six address we have been dissecting. Here is the subnet address. It'll be 2500 AAAA 3333 0001, followed by a bunch of zeros. Now remember this 001, this represents the network we're dealing with. And if you remember from my previous video, when I stated what the network ID is going to be that is normally the very first IP address within the network. So that's why we have a zero right here instead of a one. So this is technically the network ID for this IP address to fall up under. Now, if you want to shorten this thing out, this is how it will look. You can apply what is called removing leading zeros. So basically you would have 2500 AAAA3333 colon one. So we just took out these first three zeros right here just to deal with this one. And being that we have a bunch of zeros following it, we can just go ahead and put two double colons in its place. Then when we put the standard slash 64, and this is gonna represent the subnet mask options of this IP version six address, which is basically these last four blocks. And remember 64 bits, this is four blocks of 16 bits apiece. Four times 16 equals 64. Four. So to try to help it all make a little sense as to what's going on with this IP version six CIDR notation, here is an image showing you a program called Packet Tracer, where the person who created this has created a grand total of five different networks. So I'm not gonna get too, too deep into this, but every time you connect a router to another router, you are creating a network because if you remember from my A plus course or even earlier in this network, Network Plus course, I stated that when routers connect to routers, you were essentially connecting one network to another. So this network right here has been assigned 2001 colon DB8 colon one with a bunch of zeros after it to represent, I guess this is network one. And then right here, this will be network two because we're connecting this router to this router. And now we're connecting this router to this switch. So this will be network four, three and five. So one, two, three, four, five. We have a grand total of five different networks going on over here. And like I stated earlier, this third block represented by this one, two, three, four, and five, this is what has been assigned to these networks from the ISP or your internet service provider. And then from there, if we come down to here to this network, network three with the slash 64, that's where you can start kicking out IP addresses to your endpoint devices like these two computers, smartphones, laptops, or whatever other device is within this network. And also something to remember, the CIDR notation is always going to be slash 64. That is always what the CIDR notation is going to be for IP version six. All right, so in this lesson, we have talked about IP version four and IP version six CIDR notation for classless subnetting. Now, if you felt like you've gotten something valuable out of this information, go ahead and hit the like button, share button, drop a comment, but most importantly, subscribe to this channel. Also go check out my website, Technology G, so that you can get read up on the latest and greatest to help you successfully pass the CompTIA network Network Plus N10-007 certification. And until next video, ladies and gentlemen, peace.